Hi guys, it has been quite a bit since I last uploaded to the channel. I think it's about a month to be exact. Um, a lot of things happen since then. For one, I have good news. Uh, I plan on doing a new update video or at least a blog sometime soon. Um, I'll elaborate more at a later time, but for now, let me focus on the piece that you see here. Um, it was such an honor uh, to be asked by Dr. Baldwin, Baldwin to draw the Selena Quintanilla Perez. Um, as a commission for a performance piece her storytellers group performed last April. Um, I had in mind a post for her and as you can see here I'm trying to get the bare bones of where her features will be. Um, and Dr. Baldwin had asked me to draw this back in November in order to help me gather funds for my dad's medical bills due to him getting sick from COVID-19. And we all know that we hate COVID here in this house. Uh, and because she loves my style for drawing things in, in like an anime-esque um, style, uh, she also wanted to emphasize that she wanted to uh, commission Latin X and Tex-Mex descendants for this performance. Uh, Dr. Baldwin gave me a lot of creative liberties in making the piece for the show, but she ultimately had the last say on some of the direction the piece was heading to. Um, for example, she gave me the option to draw Selena's iconic uh, red suit, which you are seeing here now, um, that she wore, wore for the Astrodome uh, concert here in Houston, or the black ruffle uh, tango outfit that she wore in one of her concerts. I wanted to sketch both and give Dr. Baldwin the option to pick which one she liked the best in my style and uh, go from there. You'll see a lot of back and forth between the two outfits and a quick color story st study um, to present to my client and have them decide which one was the better option uh, for the vision that they had in mind for the piece. Um, I had like the two quick color studies feel the way you see mainly because the sketch was really messy and the pose itself was inspired by commonly done poses for idols and I thought it would fit her persona for the piece. Uh, thankfully it was easy to figure out the pose thanks to Bodhi-chan and taking the reference pictures with the poseable mannequin then actually finding a google reference or a google image that Selena did. No shame. Seriously, you guys use references and make it work for your pieces. It will cut you so much time off from the final product. Now, initially, I had Selena with her hair down to match their red jumpsuit. Um, but after Dr. Baldwin decided to go with the black ruffle skit, a skirt, I decided to redo the hair to be like a low bun, like in the reference picture that Dr. Baldwin sent me. I think one of the biggest struggles I had with this big piece was uh, figuring out how to draw the arm sleeves and the direction of the ruffles and the tights. Oh, and also the sparkly glittery accents on the bralette that she wears in her outfit. Um, a quick aside, because I don't know where to mention this, but like, Selena has such a pretty smile and face in general, my god. So, um, for my research, before I decided to do the to pick the pose that I did, right? Um, I decided to basically binge watch the concert um, in Astronome, in the Astrodome, and any other music videos that have been published on YouTube, in order to a get reference photos of her actually being on stage and doing her thing and b to get a better resolution because most of the pictures of selena on google are really really blurry you could barely make out the details that are imported for like part for portraiture like i don't know her smile and her eyes and the way that her eyebrows arch they're so all refined and like super crisp like i don't know how to describe it she just has really nice face um, and like most people remember Selena as a beautiful young woman and like yeah she had this glow to her on stage I could tell she was having fun singing and performing 
and she was just doing her thing she was feeling herself as some of my friends would say anyway i was in this weird headspace while watching her concert and just made this connection in my mind of the weight of her passing like during the performance um i come to find out that she died at 23 and that's the same age that i'm currently at at this time of the video and i don't know it was this weird feeling i got like damn i'm in the same spot as her like don't get me wrong it's this weird like oh shit moment where you stop and put yourself in her shoes for one second and realize that how they're speaking about selena even though she's long gone is how people who know me could speak about me in the occasion that i died and god forbid i like that doesn't happen for a very long time but like i don't know it's in a different way i'm making sort of a, like a legacy like selena did with the art pieces that i've done so far and the creation of content that i'm making with this very much channel if i may elaborate a bit on the performance dr baldwin's storytellers did on stage it's being able to make that emotional connection and create meaning that storytelling is such an important aspect of humans in general like i know it sounds very meta but hear me out right um a lot of people in the audience in the closing performance cried following the speed paint video between the skits people got emotional um while the performance happened because they remembered an aspect of selena that connected them in a place and a better time with family members or just a memory that means a lot to them uh they made that connection all on their own and that sort of reaction is what i wanted to enlist in people engaging with my art and it all happened during the performance we humans have this tendency of wanting to tell stories in order to create a connection and we also all sorts of mediums and tools and props in order to recreate the story to communicate important important information um and i think with selena the main message was that she was one of us and through her music we make connections and bonding moments with other people around us a lot of the performance was built on this idea of connecting uh, with people um, like either the bonds the performance and their parents had with their tias or neighbors who taught them how to make enchiladas even though there was a language barrier it's those wholesome moments that quite frankly stay with you even if the person is long gone it's these sort of reflective moments that make living worth in my opinion because you can say that you experience a certain situation that changed your view of the world uh, it might sound a bit naive, but these small experiences that resonate with people um, is really nice. And I think that that way it's like a beautiful way to like see the world. Okay, now that I got that out of the system, onto the technical stuff of the drawing. Y'all, the fold and the clothes? Awful. Zero of a 10. Would not recommend. Like, you guys remember the way I had initially the arm sleeves? They were atrocious. Um, one thing I'm really grateful for is the Clip Studios Asset Store. Luckily, I found a good frilly textured brush so I could use it to trace off the ruffles and paint them uh, and then collect the color. Um, I couldn't really figure out how to do that in the brush settings, but I just like traced over the brush and then redid it. Um, and I also found a texture for the tights as well. So normally, like you know, as have seen, um, I'll go into a, like a gray cutter wash and then do my flats on top of that, and it just kind of cuts out the process of like, is this color right? Is this not right? So I just kind of messed around with like the colors and then added the shadows and the highlights. And for some reason, I thought I had like Selena too yellow, so I had to like mess with the sliders to make her look more tan and like flushed. Because she did, doesn't have this yellow undertone. But it was just intimidating to like go about the process. Because like rendering the kinds of clothes that she has was a challenge. Like the ruffles were all moving in different places. And it was really hard for my brain to understand uh, where they go and what direction. And how light, light bounces off of them. Because the tango outfit is really really shiny. So, um, as I was thinking about this and going through the process of, like, getting it rendered, I remembered, um, 
a saying that a friend of mine uh shout out to astronym and i'll link her stuff below as well um she gave me a critique way back when when i started to do uh digital painting and she said that most of her struggles with digital painting is understanding where her hard edges and soft edges were in the drawing so i completely understand what she means by that now because the ruffles and the the type of fabric that she wears it's like this shiny like latexy kind of thing and it was difficult but in the end i think i got it to where i wanted it to be um with like how light reflects off of them and stuff like that right um i also had done like a sparkly um texture way before in one of my pokemon drawings for sol galeo and i used the same background knowledge for that in order to get the grill glittery stuff um onto the bra that hopefully it will show um because normally like i do my sketches in faro Pekka, then import it to clip studio and start working there and i think like i'm starting to get more used to like the process changing a little bit um so i think it went well um overall i think i truly outdid myself this time around like this was a good two to three months of working on this piece along with the other commissions and honestly a big big thanks to everybody that has commissioned me so far within the last five months or so all of the money i've crowdfunded uh will go to pay off my dad's medical bills and hospital bills uh since he was recovering from covid um if you think that i've earned a subscription then by all means uh hit the like follow and leave a comment if you think so um this has been diana i hope you guys to see you next time um i hope i can get to post a little bit more often but we'll go and see what happens bye you guys